Hey folks, in this interview, it's all about photography education with the photo mentor herself, Darlene Hildebrandt. This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today I have the distinct honor and pleasure of having uh, a, a longtime friend of mine, Darlene Hildebrandt, on the show to discuss a, a topic that's near and dear to both of our hearts, and that's education and, you know, well, two topics, education and photography. We're going to talk about both of those, and it's more specifically, what's kind of the state of the union in that area, you know, is it is it still save your money, go to a brick and mortar school? Is it buy a bunch of workshops? Is it forget all that and just learn from YouTube? Is it buy courses online? Darlene is here to <laughs> demystify all that for us and cool, and sort no of pressure. dive into it. Yeah, so so Darlene, how you doing? It's long time no see. It's been too long, Frederick. I'm I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm good. It's good to see your face. You never change. That smiling face is always exactly the same. I love that. So. <laughs> a few more as my hairdresser called sparkly, sparkly hairs these I days. Own those. I love those. Mm. That's good. That is good. That means you each one means you are wiser than people that don't have those. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's hope. I'm really wise then. <laughs> Keep the sparklies. Keep the sparklies rolling. Um, before, um, before we dive into the, the meat of the conversation, I want to talk about the um, uh, just sort of you know, the state of your union, the state of digitalphotomentor.com and all that stuff, you know. And what's, what's new and great. Yeah, the world that you've built. You've got a storied history. I mean, you've worked with some amazing companies. You've been in the education space as long as I have, at least. So so what's what's going on? What are you guys working on? What are you building? What is the what's the state of the union? So about, as you mentioned, I've been involved in the education of photographers for a while now. I've been teaching locally for eight years already. And uh, I was the managing editor of, of Digital Photography School, DPS, for five years. And um, I, I left DPS a year ago to branch out and expand my own horizons. And they wished me well. And, you know, we're all in good terms and we still talk and that's great. Um, and in the last year, we've been building out more photography tours. I've been to India and Vietnam and Peru in the last 12 months. I posted on my Facebook a while ago that in the last 12 months, I've been on 27 actual different airplanes and wow. been to seven different countries. Wow. That is good. So, so you know what that means? That means, so we're, we, in the beginning, we decided to focus this interview on <laughs> yeah. education Clearly, there needs to be another one that we do that talks uh, about travel and how to do it without losing all your stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think they, they, they go hand in hand together as well, you know, like travel and photography um, and education, because on on the tours is a great opportunity for people who aren't usually in sort of immersed in photography as a day to day endeavor. It gives them a chance to just that's all they're focused on is taking pictures and learning about their camera every single day for two weeks or whatever it is. And and just by osmosis, they're going to go home with with some more knowledge. Yeah, yeah, and just 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 the idea of putting yourself in out of your your comfort zone, right? It's like whenever, even if it's just like for me, even if it's just going to the next town over or into San Francisco. I mean, this is the burbs of San Francisco, <laughs> but going into San Francisco proper, you get a different energy, and mm -hmm. you know it kind of starts tickling different creative synapses that make you want to try stuff. So totally. That's totally. cool. So let, let, let's switch gears and talk about um, education. So I'll set the stage here. So there's there's the there's different modalities of learning, right? Some people learn better by having their butt in a seat and an instructor in front of the class. And some people learn better solo. Some people learn better one on one. Some people, you know, hey, YouTube, give me YouTube and a topic. I'll figure it out. And I'll, I'll you know, deconstruct my favorite photograph that way. Some people need online courses that are focused on a particular subject or topic. How do you what what's best, you know, from from the photo mentor herself? What's the what's the best process to going from, you know, people saying, hey, Jane, you you might have chops as a photographer. You should really pursue this to actually being good. How do you get good? So I think the key, you missed one, actually one modality of learning, and that is by doing. And I think, mm. um, like I talk about this in my classes when I teach in person classes, and I actually had one last night. Um, we talked about the basics of processing last night. And 
you learn either, um, there's actually studies done on this. You learn by either listening to somebody else speak. So that could be a video or an in-person you know, live class, um, or by reading, right? So an ebook or something like that, or by doing. And I think, I think most people learn best with a combination of all three, right? So in my live classes, I try and incorporate a little bit of everything, right? So I have them, you know, write their own notes, I have them listen to me for a while and then we actually, you know, get their cameras out and we're actually doing stuff or computers if we're doing processing um, by doing like if I go way back in my history, right? Like we're going back 30 years now. I'm going to date mm-hmm. myself here again. Here comes <laughs> the you know, sparkly hairs. Um, 30 plus years ago, I went to a photography college and did a two year program, which was a you know a degree program in photography. And I've been asked that the question is, if um, I was to do it all over again now, would I do that? You know, there's been debates about, you know, college programs, like you mentioned, and would I do that? And I can't honestly say with certainty that I would at the, in this day and age, because there's so many other avenues available um, that, you know, you can learn from, like you said, YouTube and all of those things what college does give you and what a lot of my students always ask me in my classes is when am I going to get it? When is there going to be this magic aha mm-hmm. moment, the light bulb's mm-hmm. going to go on. And then all of a sudden, you know, I understand my camera and I understand light and all these other things. And my answer is always the same when you put in your 10,000 hours. Right. Yeah. And if you're doing um, a college program course where you're doing it every day and you have homework, you're going to get your 10,000 hours faster. Right. Yeah. 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 Someone once told me, I forget who it was. Well, someone once used that, that same sort of 10,000 hour analogy, but they were saying from a photographer standpoint, just think of your shutter finger as being filled with 1 million bad images. And <laughs> the only way to get to the good ones are to get the bad ones out because it's yeah. linear. Right. So just take, you got to keep taking pictures to get isn't rid of all those Cartier, bad shots. Isn't that a Cartier Bresson quote or something? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. So maybe there's a famous quote and maybe it's Cartier Bresson, but it sounds like something that he would have said about, you know, your, your worst pictures are your first 10 million or 10,000 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I love that. That is so mm-hmm. appropriate because it's, yeah, practice, practice, practice. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, right? Right. Um, uh, so so on, on that topic, though, that, that, that's where the line gets blurry, right? Because we're, we're in this, this world of creativity. Everything's moving. Even more so now than you know, back in the day, right? Every Remember back in the day when it was film and if Nikon or whomever released a new camera, it was a big deal, right? Or if Photoshop or Adobe released a new version of Photoshop, it was a huge deal because now we have mm-hmm. all these new superpowers. Those days are gone or they're more, much more frequent. So we're numb to them. So how how do photographers, you know, sort of stay on top of that while also getting good? Because you're like, okay, there's a new camera. It's got this. I got to think about megapixels. I got to right. think about video now, 6K, 8K, 4K. Uh, now I got to have a website. I got to learn WordPress. Now I got to do, you know, it goes on and on and on. How to, what, what's the mentor's suggestion for focusing on, on the, the wheat and letting the, the chaff go? I'm glad you asked me that because I actually said to the group last night that, that um, I'm a bit of a controversial teacher in some avenues because I disagree with a lot of other teachers and a lot of ways that a lot of other photography teachers teach. Um, I don't profess that you should shoot in manual and be a photographer. To be a photographer, you have to shoot in manual. I actually mm-hmm. tell them the opposite is true, that you should learn step by step and you know build up to that because the cameras are so complicated. Just saying, okay, I'm going to shoot in all manual. And then people get confused and they start shooting manual focus as well because they think yeah. it's the same thing. You know, so my advice is to learn one thing until you've mastered it and then learn the next thing, you know, like learn one button on your camera today, learn another button on your camera tomorrow. Um, I did a photography challenge on my website. I can share the link with you if you like about 30 days to becoming one or or practicing with your camera every day. And excuse me, what it does is you get, gets you using your camera, (coughs) sorry, for five minutes, 10 minutes every day so that you learn something new about it. And in the process of doing that, a lot of people said that they, they were in the point where they were going to trash their camera and buy a new one, which is kind of everybody's first instinct, right? It's like, Oh, my pictures aren't good enough. I need a new camera. Well, no, maybe it's not your camera, right? Mm -hmm. What if it's you? So my challenge is to really learn your gear and get outside of that whole, you know, the gas syndrome, you know, the gas gear acquisition. Oh yeah. Um, 
get away from the, you know, I have to have the latest, greatest, you know, squirrel always being distracted by the, the next thing that's coming down the line and use what you have to its absolute maximum, you know, and when you find that you've reached its limits, then consider upgrading. Like right now I'm using a six year old laptop and I'm finding that I think my graphic card is failing, which sucks. Um, but it's served me well and I haven't updated to the latest, greatest, um, you know, MacBook Pro, I've avoided doing that on purpose because there's nothing wrong with my computer. Yeah. And I didn't upgrade from the Fuji X-T1 to the X-T2 just because it came out. I waited until the 3 came out because it had some additional features, but that was like three years in between, you know? Yeah. Like you said, when we had film cameras, I never upgraded my film cameras because there was no reason to. Yeah, I was like, there's new film, there. a new film stock came out. Let's try that out, right, with my old camera. <laughs> And so I know, and that sounds, it sounds dated and old fogey-ish to, you know, some of the new photographers like, you know, but we have all this new technology, things are advancing faster now. And I get that. But I think part of the challenge for a lot of photographers is to not get swept up in that world of the, the like you said, gear acquisition syndrome or upgrade-itis or mm -hmm. what I see in my decade plus of podcasting, what I've seen is people that use um, the, 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 the fake need for a new piece of kit, whether it be a computer, lights, camera, whatever, as an excuse not to shoot. You know, in other words, if I was Darlene Hildebrandt right. and I had her Fuji, I could do shots like that, too, but I can't. So I'm not going to even try. Right. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. see that with your students? Oh, yeah. We actually had that conversation last night. Again, um, somebody had just bought uh, upgraded to a 6D Mark II. And, you know, we even had this conversation about, well, if I I said, you actually have a better camera than I do because I'm shooting with a crop sensor Fuji that's, you know, a year old or whatever. And you've got a full frame Canon. So technically you have the pro camera. Yeah. So let's swap. And who's going to get better pictures? And she's like, she said, she says, well, you, of course you know, because I don't have 30 years of experience that you have. Right. So it's not, I mean, there's another sort of that phrase out there of it's not about the camera. It's not the gear. It's what you do with it. And it's your experience. But I think until you can actually internalize that, um, there's still that, that, that niggling feeling that, okay, I need to have a better camera because mine is holding me back. And mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, that's where, like the word mentor comes in, whether it be me or uh, somebody local or join a camera club. You know, if you don't have any other options, join a local camera club and find some mentors there because um, there's all kinds of different experience levels within a group of photographers like that and that you could find somebody more experienced to help you out, you know, on, on where you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I also tell people, you know, it doesn't matter when you pick up a camera or, you know, at what stage of life you're in, because uh, people feel uh, almost embarrassed that, oh, I'm, I'm just beginners, right? Well, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. You are where you are. And if you just started, that's fine. You know, I'm sure that you have life skills or or business skills in, in the work area that I don't have, right? And nor, you know, would it take me 30 years to get where you're at in that area? So yeah. just be patient with yourself, give yourself a break. And um, what I gave, the advice I gave her was, you know, she said, well, um, you know, it's, and I've heard this before. I'm looking at all these great pictures on the internet and I want mine to look like that. And I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm not good enough. Right. And I said, well, stop comparing yourself to other people's pictures and compare your, your pictures from right now to your pictures from a year ago. Right. And if they're better now than they were a year ago, you're going in the right direction. Keep going that way. Yeah. And how do you, how do you do that though? So just to continue down that line of thinking, the, the, uh, you know, for better or for worse, the, the, the beast that is social media, right? With people sharing images <laughs> on Instagram and, you know, whatever, you know, it's in, in the olden days, not to make this about the olden days, but in the olden days there for better, or for worse, there was a limited audience that could see the images that you were shooting. Yeah. Um, and which meant there's limited impact on other of, of your work from other people. You could kind of work in a vacuum for the most part, um, which is good and bad. And the, the good part is, of, of what we have today is you could take a shot and tomorrow a million people could see it. It could go viral, et cetera. Back then you could take a shot, could be the best shot in the world. The tree falls in the forest and no Nobody one hears knows. it. It doesn't make a sound, right? So, so to that end, if as you're progressing down the line of learning how to be a good photographer or learning to get good, 
how how do you kind of tune out all that noise that's around you and and not be influenced by you know hey i think i did this great shot and now Mm -hmm. you know i just saw this shot by renee robin looks amazing and mine looks like crap so i'm not going to post it like how do you how do you get past that and get to the point where you're confident so I think two pieces, uh, you need to find somewhere that you can share your, first of all, you have to be not afraid to share. Um, you have to be not afraid to share your images and to accept feedback, right? But, uh, and, and a constructive criticism. And then the second thing that I want to say is choose your feedback sources carefully, right? Mm-hmm. So putting something up on Facebook or putting it in a big group, I see so many of these massive groups on Facebook, you know, have hundreds of thousands of members and so on. Um, and a lot of times the feedback is, is either unhelpful, rude, nasty, you know, or downright just uh, irrelevant. So choose where you place your images, especially if you're starting out and you're sharing for the first time, you know, again, back to like a camera club or a smaller group. Uh, but definitely you want to share with other photographers, other people who are doing this. Cause if you share it with your family and friends, of course, they're going to say it's amazing. Right. I mean, it's like my mom likes every single thing I put on Facebook cause that's her job, right? Mm-hmm. She's my mom. She's my mom. <laughs> and, um, if you, if you just only share with people who are going to be nice to you, then you won't grow either. So you want to share and ask for feedback and how you ask is important as well. You know, like just posting an image and saying, here, here's my picture I took of, of my dog or my cat or whatever. Um, you want to ask for specific feedback, you know, like, what do you think of this image? How do you like the composition? Is the lighting good? Could I have done anything differently here to make it better? So the, the questions that you ask when you share are going to give you the kind of feedback that you want as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And what, what is the right questions or what are the right questions? Um, here's, here's another, speaking of good questions, here's another question. So the, in the world of photography as compared and contrasted with other specialties, let's, you know, it could be whatever marketing, it could be, you know, medical or whatever, those other many or most other professions that people choose to go in that are not specifically creative or subjective like photography requires some sort of credential in order for you or someone to say and look at your work and say yeah darlene's made it she can you know let me sign that she's got her degree in this or she is now certified in that there's not that sort of thing in photography you used to kind of be with brooks and other photography institutions but even when those were around It was kind of like, you know, stuff changes so quickly. You know, I don't what's in your portfolio today might be crap tomorrow. What's the state of the union in the in from a mentor standpoint? What's the state of the union or the current thinking in terms of what you know, how you prove yourself worthy to someone that may want to hire you? Well, I think we also want to have the discussion, too, about what is your goal with your photography, right? Like you're you're talking more in terms of portfolio and do you want to, you know, get paid gigs with this, with your stuff, right, with your work versus a lot of my students in particular just want to take nice pictures for themselves, right? Like we had this, again, discussion last night about how many megapixels do you need because what are you doing with it? You know, if you're just putting it on Facebook or even on an online portfolio or even making, you know, like a little blur book or something, 8 by 10 you don't need a 45 megapixel Nikon full frame camera. Like you right. really don't. Yeah. Um, or a medium format or whatever. Like you just don't need it. And so my first thing would be, okay, what, what is your goal, right? What do you want to do with your photography? And I get a lot of people that say, well, I'd ultimately, you know, I'd love to make a living from it, or I'd like to make some money on the side, or maybe, you know, um, I had an email conversation with somebody about, uh, making money doing stock photography, which in this day and age as well is extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Like I know people who were making a full-time income in stock and the bottom has fallen out, you know, it's in the toilet because you can buy, you know, like I'm going to exaggerate like a million stock images for 10 bucks, you know, on royalty free websites. Or, or get them free. Yeah. On uh, Pixie set or, or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah, uh, so yeah. Unsplash or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Unsplash, yeah. I use it, you know, and lots of people use it. So, and the photographer gets like 10% of that money. So making a living doing those things is really hard and making a living doing photography is really hard. You know, like people think, Oh, I really love doing this. So I'm going to do it as a living. So what I would challenge you is because I've made a a lot of my living or most of my living during my entire career from photography in some way, shape or form, let me tell you this. And the phrase is that 
photo- the photography business, and I'll use the air quotes, is 90% business and 10% photography. Yeah. So if you want to be doing 100% photography, don't go into business because you're going to need to also know things about, and we were talking about this before we started recording, WordPress, and you mentioned that, you're going to need to know about how to how to handle your bookkeeping. I got a bookkeeping nightmare right now and stacks of paper on my desk right now. You're going to need to know how to market and sell. People are afraid of selling. They think it's a bad word, right? So you need to be able to sell your images and get people to pay you for them. And if you can't do that, then you're not going to be able to make a living. So all of those things are a whole other areas of, of education that you need to get if you want to run a business, right? Yeah. yeah. But if you want to do photography and love it and always, you know, do it for yourself, then don't worry about getting paid gigs and just do photography because you love doing photography. You know, whether you're an accountant or, or a brain surgeon or um, you can tell I've been watching too much Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Everybody there has a brain tumor, right? You know, it's like, um, just do photography for the reason that that you want to do it. But if they're decide. doing it, if they're doing it for the reason that they want to do it, or you know, here's that you, you remember the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. one of the I think it was in that book, but it was it was the the idea that uh, the the dream is to okay, you're working your day job and you have this hobby at night that you love doing, you dream of doing it you know, when you're sitting in meetings at work and then you, you know, one day you decide to make the leap and, and start doing that thing as a business. And then you become to resent that thing because of all of the stuff, like the pile of papers on your desk and, you know, all the other widgets that go around it, because now you have to make that, you got to make that dog run and generate revenue because, you know, it's no longer just a hobby. What are the dangers of that? Right. Of, of taking your photography. In other words, should people if you love photography, should you think twice about trying to make a business out of it and just stay you know, in it for the love of which is amateur yeah. versus trying to go pro and risk polluting your dream? Well, I think there's a real danger of doing that. And uh, the biggest danger is burnout. Right. Burnout. And then, like you said, you start to resent it and then you don't love photography anymore, which is the reason you got into it in the first place. Yeah. So. I would say that before you do it, you know, I'm not saying don't do it, but before you do it, you know, go in with your eyes open, do some research, talk to other people who are doing it full time and, and see, you know, uh, it's hard to get somebody that's willing to give you honest answers. That's the other thing, you know, as you could talk to six photographers and they're all going to, you know, tell you sunshine and rainbows and unicorns, right. That everything's great when it's really not, you know, they're working 80 hours a week and they're paying themselves $30,000 a year. Maybe. I mean, go look at the stats for the average number of hours that a photographer works a week and their average salary. And it's, it's abysmal. I have to say, right. Yeah. And then the other side, don't do it. Just go in with with your eyes open. open. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the other the other side of it is um, just on the, the same topic of money is we kind of talked about this in the beginning. But in my opinion, I think in a lot of cases, money is a uh, it holds you back because I know some photographers that have, you know, relatively unlimited flows of income, you know, or people that have unlimited flows of income. They're not. But photography is a hobby. So they've purchased Every piece of gear, every <laughs> yeah. drone, every <laughs> yeah. lens, every 360 camera, everything, they have it all and don't know how to use any of it, right? right? Because they could afford it. So they just, you know, Amazon Prime, boom, is here tomorrow. I got it, you know, and they'll use it versus the people that have to scrimp and scrape and walk 10 miles, you know, to, to get that next lens. And then they shoot the heck out of that lens until the legs fall off of it. What's your, what are your thoughts on there, on that? You know, cause there's, there's, there's multiple kinds of people in the world. Some people just love buying stuff. You know, other people want to create art. Where, what's, how do you reconcile that money is evil in terms of creativity <laughs> idea? <laughs> well, to bring it back full circle to the education thing, right? Like if, if you have unlimited money, that's good for you. Um, but I would say don't spend all your money in one place, right? Don't put it all into gear, right? Don't buy... A, a 500 you know mil lens if you're not photographing birds right or wildlife right like get the stuff that is applicable to what you're shooting and what you need and figure out what you're shooting before you go buy it and take the rest of that money that you would spend on a, another full frame body or something i mean i've had students come to my classes that have exactly what you just described they've got 
like I know one person had like four full frame bodies and like an entire rolling bag of lenses. It was like <laughs> 10 times more stuff than I have. Right. Yeah. And it was crazy amount of stuff. Um, I've seen people buy studio lighting and strobes and they have no idea how to use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a tutoring session with a lady several years ago when I was doing one-on-one tutoring and I went to her house to help her and she said, I can't get a good exposure. Everything I shoot is overexposed. Well, I went in, took my handheld light meter, which nobody even knows what that is anymore, set up mm-hmm. her lights, metered them, set up a main light, a fill light, a back light, a hair light. She had four lights and she had no idea what she was doing. She just turned them all on and turned her camera on, took a picture and it was white, right? So then I metered it, set her camera, took one picture. Of course, it was the perfect exposure. And she's like, how did you do that? Right? I said, yeah. I said, cause I learned this stuff. I do have been doing this for 30 years, you know, <laughs> and people buy like exactly what you just said, buy gear and they have no idea how to use it uh, or they have no idea where to go to how to get help to use it as well. Right. Like she didn't know where to turn. So I was able to help her in that uh, two hour session that we did learn how to use her gear. And she went out and bought a light meter and, and she was good to go. Um, so I would say spend some of your money that you might have allocated in buying more gear and spend that on education. So whatever that looks like for you, if you've got courses that are available locally where you can go and put your butt in a chair and sit in a classroom, you know, do that. Start there. Um, I do workshops. Uh, I know lots of other photographers and educators do workshops. Like I have a workshop in Southern Alberta and I have another one in uh, Western Canada. And uh, we have another one in Scotland on landscape photography. So if you want to go do a, a workshop, that's giving you a little bit more extensive learning opportunity where it's over several days and it might be on a particular topic, you know, like landscape or the ones that I'm doing here in um, Canada are more sort of beginner intermediate. So I give you an experience of like, for example, in, in um, the Okanagan, we photograph a moving stream. So we do uh, long exposures and playing with neutral density filters. We go and shoot some sunset stuff. So we play around with bracketing and HDR. Uh, we do a portrait of a winemaker in the vine. So we're playing with some portraits. Nice. And, you know, because it's in wine country, we also get to sip some wine. Yeah. So <laughs> that's never a bad thing, right? Yeah. Um, so spend some of your, your hard-earned money on on actually getting out there and getting some education. And I do think that there is still value in, you know, face-to-face um, opportunities. Love it. All right. So just to, Darlene, just to wrap things up, I want to I talk a little bit about where where people can just kind of dive in right now right if they want to if they want to start learning about this stuff i know like like we said at the beginning you are the the the, the digital photo mentor herself <laughs> personified which means you have some courses available and that sort of thing if people want to take the digital version of you and learn right. from her how do they go about doing that we have lots of stuff on the website digitalphotomentor.com they can sign up and get our weekly email. I have an article that comes out every week. Um, for example, I, th- I don't know when you're going to publish this, but as of our time of talking this week, we have one on mountain photography tips. So how to get better photos of mountains. Recently, mm. we've done mobile phone photography tips. Uh, I've done some processing tips. So there's something that comes out every week and they can get notice of that. And if they go to our um, page on courses, we have two courses available. One is aimed at beginners. So if you're more into, you need to learn the the basics of the exposure triangle, things like that, that would be more what you're looking for. And then we have one that's specifically on people and portrait photography, if that's your interest. That's cool. So that's that's all at, at where where are those located right now? Digitalphotomentor.com is our main website and I believe slash courses. I have to confirm okay. that is where the courses are. Perfect. But they can sign up. They can sign up for the email um, on any page. Basically there'll be like a little thing in the side for them to sign up. Love that. Love that. Congratulations on everything you're doing. You're crushing it over there. You're, you guys are the, uh, the, I, I want to say solopreneurs, but you're not solo because it's you and your husband. You guys are duopreneurs. You're duopreneurs, <laughs> right? Dualpreneurs. We'll, we'll make a new, we'll make a new term. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, congratulations on everything you're doing, and um, and min- many more successes to you. And thank you for what you're doing to contribute to the photography community in terms of education and all that. Because it's a, you know, as you know. Photography is fun, but getting over certain hills of understanding can be pretty rocky. And once you get it and you're like, oh, 
that's what it means. That's what the inverse square law means. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know? exactly. What, then you and, got and it. And you know the thing I, I actually really enjoy, um, when I started teaching eight years ago, it kind of was an accident. Like I was sitting in, I was working in a camera store and then the owner of the camera store, he comes in and I was working in the office at the time, part time. And he comes in, he goes, they ever taught any classes or I go, yeah, I, you know, I've done stuff like just day workshops kind of things for like photo, you know, PPOC members when I was at, and he goes, would you like to teach a class in the store? And I go, okay. And he goes, okay, well you build it and we'll sign them up. So that's kind of how I started teaching was <laughs> it was just like, okay, yeah, I'll give that a go. And what I discovered in the process was that I actually really love it as well. Because yeah. like, you know, if you, um, like I don't have kids, but my niece and nephew, you know, go to Christmas day at their house. It's more exciting there than it is our house because they have that excitement of opening their gifts Christmas day. Right. Yeah. And for me, when I have my students have that aha moment that you just described, it's like Christmas day for me. Right. So having my students get to the place where they go, Oh, okay. I get it. That's, that's what, that's what turns me on. That's yeah. You live, yeah, you live for the, the decisive yeah. epiphany moment. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And I just, so everybody knows too. I mean, like a lot of, uh, websites and things, uh, offer courses and free articles and stuff. But I would like to say that like I personalize my stuff as much as possible. And I like to, I treat my students as friends, you know, and I go for coffee with some of them regularly here locally. And, um, I answer every email that I get from my readers. So it's not this, I don't want to be this impersonal, you know, person that's up here. I, I want to interact and get to know my, my followers and my readers as a human being. Love it. Love it. Truer words were never spoken. Yeah. <laughs> Connect on a human level is the world needs more of that. Right. I mean, mm. No, that's really good. Cool. Okay, so one more time, if, if the the website URL is digitalphotomentor.com. dot com, right. and they can find me on Instagram as DP Mentor as well. All right, Darlene Hildebrand, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Good to see you. This is Twitter.